Ben and I are going to tag team a little bit, so you might get used to calling us M&M. &M. Uh, we are really happy. We've been doing a lot of planning, and you're here. Yay! We have an exciting program, as you know. I'm sure uh, you're looking forward to some of the activities. And you might have noticed that you were greeted by two young dancers at the front doors here. We thought that entirely appropriate, because you're here in Anishinaabeg territory. And this is the best of our culture, our youth that are coming up in the community. So Miles Sutherland is 17 and he's in high school um, looking into uh, engineering uh, studies in his future. And Avery Sutherland is 12 and they're very accomplished dancers. Um, we thought we'd give you a special treat, which is just a very short uh, dance performance by them. It's called an intertribal and they come in and they dance and they bring forward the good spirits and the good energy. My role, as I said, was, is uh, search and rescue. Um, one of the things that we teach, and I do teach the, in the OPP, I teach search and rescue, um, is wilderness survival. And we talk about survival priorities. And you guys have 
fairly extensive bush areas uh, where you're from as well. Yeah. Our daughter's been having trouble lately and, and so we just wanted pulse, to get her out so irregular. Irregular. Try to Melanie's pulse just is help her irregular. And, uh -huh. and um, we didn't know she was about moving one over five. four. Just and her. Alexa, 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 I couldn't carry that very far. That's the thing, you know, we always talk about how, you know, sort of, oh, and then you carry them out. It takes a lot <laughs> of effort. That was hard work, yeah. Yeah. Have you been traveling anywhere else or are you no, just local just to there? No, out in the bush camping and we needed to cut some trees for wood and heat and this happened and kind of, now I don't know what to do. Okay, so the, the collateral history is that they're from the area and they're out just cutting trees for some firewood. Okay. Okay, so uh, I want you to call back in any cases that are conditioned, but we do have help on the way for you, okay? And you still have that person meeting on the, uh, on the road to, to direct them in, is that correct? That's correct. Did you find dispatch would be helpful, especially if you were not? You know what I find a about just the little training? logistics about understanding how to use your phone, understanding yes. how to use. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I yeah. Think that's really good. Oh, okay. Yeah. I think well, it was great I, it was, too. I found it neat that they could, they knew how to use the BlackBerry because I'm an yeah. iPhone user, so I wouldn't have any idea yeah. how to use a BlackBerry, yeah. right? All so I yeah. to do is tell you how to do it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> good You're a BlackBerry yeah. user. Yeah. 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 For me, the biggest challenge is because I knew so. all the terms, but not in English. Oh yeah. yeah. You see, for somebody who's you know who's you That's know right. uh, whose language is not English, that you know, right. I mean, I wanted to, to to say something. I just didn't know how to say it in oh, English. Okay. When when the panic yeah. rushed in. Okay. And, yeah. And, and so I find it quite challenging actually. You bet. We gotta remember. Excuse me. Uh, where do you work, Doc? In Thailand. In Thailand, but yeah. you an emerge department like? Uh, no, no. I'm a general practitioner. Oh, okay. When you work in the bush, it's different than work in a hospital environment. Mm. Okay. Now, if you're going to go through that, she mm. has one hole in her now, mm. and you want to make two. Yeah. Right you're out right in the bush. You want, do you want to make two, or do you want to keep it one? Keep it at one? Let's try keeping it one. There's about three different ways of doing this. I'll tell you the best one at the end. One way is to cut the eye off. Mm. You've got to watch these barbs, oh, gosh, and run it bars. all the way through without the eye. Mm. You've got two holes. Okay. Mm. The other is a scalpel that you put and you go beside the hook. I'll show you the hook. You, you take a scalpel and you, you run beside the hook this way, then twist a little bit and it lifts out. Mm -hmm. And the third way in, in a field scenario is what they call the string jerk. And the string jerk is the best way of doing it. Okay. So let's, we'll go back here a bit. When you look at it, the problem, the main problem is that barb right there, mm. yep. correct? So when it's in the person, when you lift, that you're making it worse, mm. correct? If you take the eye, and that's called the eye, and hold that down, see the way it acts with a hole, it relieves that barb. Right. Now if we can pull straight this way, it pops out. Oh, good. And we'll show you. This... This only works on a fixed object, like it doesn't work on an earlobe or something like that, but just about every place else, it works great. So you make a little loop, and go like this, and we'll do it slower afterwards for you. I just don't want that torn too much. And you pull that <coughs> tight, okay? Now you make sure there's nobody standing here. You it's hold the, bit, this eye down, and you go like that. And it pops right out. I'll be cold, please. Okay. Um, have you got any tubes? Okay, the bleeding sterile. has stopped. Have you got any, what That's do you want, good. sir? The sterile stuff. Is there a tube? A tube? Nope, there's no tube. There's scissors? No scissors. Just what keep an eye out. What I would really like is something idea. that's airtight, that we can put the adhesive over here. What would be airtight? Well, the plastic bag, if we have to. Money. 
they'll probably um, yeah. just take off those. Or yeah, hey, how about we take this? Mm. How about that? Mm -hmm. Thanks very much. To breathe or not to breathe? <laughs> okay, well, what do you want to do with that? This. I would put it away that the bear doesn't smell it or whatever. Oh, okay. Can we get some tape so that we can take uh, it away? Evan, are you still with us? Yeah. Keep yeah. talking. Bear with us, Evan. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Now, what I'm not confident about is that this is. Can we use this tape for something? Fine, so we got. Hang on, we'll just put uh, some pressure on there when you cough. Let's uh, if you get a cough. And move your arm, Evan, so she can see. I'm watching out for the bed. Good. My the ambulance is on its way. Right, we really need to see these offices a bit more. How are you feeling, Evan? His breathing is still not better. We're in a lot of pain. Oh, oh, really short of breath. Yeah. When you say seal it up, what do you mean? <coughs> well, yeah, we need another piece here. Would this have you do to tight like any difference, do you think? Oh, it looks good so far. Oh, right. It's yeah, getting a wax. Yeah. Yes, yeah. that's not a good idea, but uh, never mind. What about the rest we'll of the We'll buy bag? a drink tonight. <laughs> now you notice when he breathes in that the bag sucks tight to the chest. And when he breathes out, it air up. is leaking out, or used to leak out, until you put that last piece of tape on. Okay. And now his breathing is getting worse again. Mm -hmm. well, Was your intent to seal the plastic? Oh. Yep. No, I'll seal it. Ah, sorry. <coughs> oh, oh, and we'll need another bit. Yeah. Um, the sucking has now stopped, okay. but time has passed. Yeah. He's getting clinically worse. Well, we've just learned that it takes six, uh, six, four the, times as long to walk. His trachea is deviating now to the right. Oh. So we now need to put in another tube. You don't have a tube. You don't have a knife. You don't have anything to impale his chest wall with, just for the sake of the talk. Okay. What physical maneuver could you do to relieve that pressure? And this is um, get him to roll over onto the other side. And yeah, nothing happens. Okay. So what's happened is the bear has gouged a hole. The hole is bigger than his trachea. When his diaphragm depresses, the negative pressure used to suck air through the hole, ventilated the pleural space, which is useless. Yeah. You've seen, you fixed that. Okay. You fixed that. Mm -hmm. But he's still got a hole in his lung. So when air goes into the lung and out through the hole, it's now gathering Just there. in the pleural space, creating a tension pneumothorax. Okay. The way to, to help that would be to, and I kind of tricked you, sorry. Okay. Have a bit of a get. Leave that off. Oh. It's a flutter valve. He sucks in. Oh, yes. The air leaks out of the lung. Yes. Mm -hmm. We don't have the means to fix his, his torn lung here. Right. All we're doing is keeping the physics of the thorax such that he doesn't die on us. Right, yeah. This is the most important sling that you'll learn today. <laughs> <laughs> the University of... Uh, University of... No, not us. Northern, Northern Ontario. Ontario. No, us. What is this? <laughs> <laughs> of the Manitoulin Wilderness yes. Educators okay. to present you with an honorary doctorate. <laughs> Dr. Radis, could you remove your hat, please? <laughs> Dr. Radis in Medicinae Solitudinum, <laughs> which translates to Doctor of Wilderness Medicine. <laughs> All its rights and privileges. Now, this is utilitarian. If you're hurt in any of your academic provisions, this could be used with a sling. <laughs> it can be used as a bandage, it can be used as a tourniquet, you can blow your nose. <laughs> and you will not get your ass shot off in deer season. <laughs> Thank you for all your support.
Well, thank you very much. This is completely unexpected. Uh, very much appreciated. I did say last night for those who were there that uh, while the Ahmed has, has become recognised nationally and internationally, really, as, as one of the, uh, of the gems, the uh, jewel in the crown of Northern Ontario School of Medicine, and this, so it's a very special honour and a privilege for me, for me to, to, uh, to wear this, uh, this hood and, and uh, to, to hold this doctorate. So thank you very much. <laughs> Today is about appreciating the medicines, but instead of just, oh, this is a sage plant, this is a, a columbine, this is what it does. Let us use, make it more personal, where you, you use the medicines that you need and get healing today. We're seizing it, the kinikinik. That's the tobacco we utilize. Mm -hmm. And it's still, it's like it still hasn't come up yet because it's more of a summer plant. Pearly Everlasting, Milk Thistle. So you know how the poison ivy goes on like it strings? So we need the, the root. And to pick the root, you follow it as long as you can. And to dry it up, you wring it around, tie it up, and let it dry. Then you take it to your heart. So you have a good heart, that you good things out of love. Even for strangers, compassion, which the world needs to give of themselves. Okay? Absolutely. Then you take it and you put it all through your body. Okay. It's your container for this life cycle. And right to the ground. Okay, then you take it because the ground on you walk on, remember, is like put it on the ground okay. and put your feet through it. Because you will move forward in life. Not let the past drag you back. You know, like some people can't move forward. They're stuck. This is to help you move forward in your life and not bring the past with you, holding you back. Good? Absolutely. That was fantastic. Thank you. You're welcome. Then you could just dump it in a fire pit and each of you will make your own smudge medicine. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Thank you. So we'll go through a big uh, tour through downtown Mantuaning, right? The most happening place on the island. <laughs> and and, and uh, just follow me and uh, we'll get there. <laughs> So we're going to go see the Global Savages. We've been touring quite a bit through the world. We've been introduced to our uh, foundation teachings and traditional teachings from our elder Eddie King, who resides on Wakamakong Unceded Indian Reserve. Throughout the years, we've been hearing and listening and sharing also. And a lot of our shows started to incorporate a lot of our traditional teachings, a lot of our traditional stories inside the theater. So we've done a lot of that and now we've really came down to the idea of our foundation teachings and really honing it into this idea of storytelling. Well they only open apparently in the morning for half an hour, right? 15, 15 it's, no, no, it's 15 minutes on the hour. It's oh, every hour, okay. Every, every hour is through the day if it's boat traffic, so, so we lucked out. I had another um, reflection about the swing bridge from the perspective of a rural physician and one of the key features to me is that if I have a patient um, that I need to evacuate from Mindanoia um, on an urgent basis, um, one of the things that our ambulance personnel do is they coordinate with the, the transportation company to ensure that the bridge is open for the ambulance as it proceeds through because certainly it is, you know, there's that potential for it, uh, long waits, um, especially every hour on the hour for, for, 15, uh, for 15 minutes in the summer if there's boating traffic going through. So that, sometimes that can make a difference between 
making it to surgery on time or not. I have a lot of memories, a lot of good memories. Some sad, but nevertheless, you know, no matter what happens to us, no matter what kind of a day we're having, we always look forward towards towards the good part. In the school here, I was seven and a half years old when I went in, in the girls' school. We were given numbers. As we entered in there, we were given a number. Mine was 43, and they used to put little labels, our numbers, on our clothing. And uh, they, didn't, uh, they didn't let us wear our own clothes. They gave us uh, some kind of a smock smock look and thing that we that we had to wear every day. Changed it once a week. And uh, even if the girls wore a belt around there, they were told no no. So we had to abide by all the regulations that they set and everything was order, order, order. We had to line up before we went to classes. We had to line up before we we were told it was bedtime. Line up, and then we had to go up the stairs to third floor, line up all the way. I learned to obey, obey the rules, lived by the rules. I got along. Others didn't like didn't like the rules, stepped out of line. Those are the ones that got punished. Because we were given numbers, we lost our names. We were calling each other by numbers. Mine was 43. If somebody wanted to talk to me, 43, 43. And then I had to answer to 43, not my name. That was, that was really something. Today, even today, and in the past few years when I've seen girls that I went to school with over there, I'd remember their names. I saw one older than me over here a couple of times. Hey, 99! <laughs> <laughs> and she told me, oh, 43, you're here! Because <laughs> we still remembered our numbers, eh? Yeah, that was the funny thing. We'd get a big laugh out of that anyway. Can I ask, how, how were the children selected? Did everyone from the reservation have to go to the school? No. It, how no. were they selected? How I, how I went in here was um, my two brothers and my sister were already talking English when I was seven years old. And when they'd come home for summer, they were allowed to come like the summer holidays, July and August. And they were talking English. And so I couldn't understand him, because I, I wasn't in school yet. I only spoke my language. So I wanted to learn the language. So I told my mother, put me in school. I want to go to school. I want to go and learn the language, because they're talking, uh, talking English, and I can't understand what they're saying. <laughs> so I wanted to go to school so bad. My mother put me in school, and this is where she put me. So I had to learn the language. Inside of that one first year I was here, I could understand what they were talking about. <laughs> yeah, and uh, but I never lost my language. My stepfather took me out of here when I was uh, 11 and a half years old. Get me out of uh, the religion barrier that they were facing. And uh, I went to an Anglican day school where we spoke the language at leisure and we, we, we had to speak English only in the classroom. Teacher never bothered us when we were playing, we spoke our language, so we were more free to speak our language. And we spoke uh, uh, our language at home, and that was the only language we knew. My English name is uh, Elaine Johnston. Uh, the, the Indian agent couldn't pronounce our, our Ojibwe name, 
So uh, we were given the name Johnston. Uh, but I have a spirit name, which is Wawaskanokwe, which is Flower Woman. I belong to the Turtle Clan. My father was originally from Cape Croker, which is uh, uh, a ways away from here in Ontario. My mother was here, and they met at the residential school that you went to, to go and see. I am a registered nurse by profession, as, as was mentioned, and I've just become the chief, uh, uh, was elected as the chief in November. And when I grew up here in, in this reserve, we didn't have running water and sewage. We now have it. We have a water treatment plant. But I think our community has been very progressive when I compare our community to the northern communities. Uh, because they don't, in the northern communities, a lot of them are flying communities. They don't have uh, good drinking water, sewage. They don't have very good housing. And so their conditions compared to our community are much worse than our First Nations. And you've been to Manitoulin Island. I used to work there, and that's when Marion says that, you know, I've been around in healthcare. I was the manager for one of their healthcare services on Manitoulin Island. So I think that um, we're, we're, we're striving and, and looking towards how can we make things better. And I can say for my community, and I think for Manitoulin Island communities, because I've worked there, the difference that between what's happening in the north and here is because we took on health care. And the difference is, because we took on health care, we're developing the solutions ourselves. We don't have somebody else coming in and telling us, this is how you do it. We're developing those solutions. And I think that's the difference. And so I think that to be a proactive community, we need to have, be involved in those decisions, we need to have community participation. We need to be involved and have that dialogue with our community as to how do we resolve these issues.